This is a website that's called WikiNoah. And it's basically an encyclopedia of Noahism. Okay? Now, <coughs> Noahism is that within Jewish thought, um, there's a distinction between Jews and non-Jews. But that distinction, the Jews have the Torah. And the non-Jews are commanded in the seven Noahide laws, or the Noahide code, and so forth. And this website is a website devoted to people, non-Jews, who observe the Noahide code, who call themselves Noahides. And there are actually a few Noahide congregations in the world. Okay, now the one thing that really hit me on the site is that one of the things they describe is that they are totally within the parameters of, hal of, of halachic Judaism, but they talk about the faiths with an S at the end, okay? The faiths of Noahism, okay? The different faiths within Noahism. And that really hit me. Um, because what they're really saying is, is even in terms of this broad acceptance of Noahism, there are different views of what Noahism is, and differences in 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 um, perspective and theology. And when I saw that, like for example, there is a big this, there's a big um, separation in the Ochai community between what the people they call the general practitioners of Noahism and the Chabad practitioners of Noahism. It seems to be that there are different groupings of Noahides based upon the rabbis that they've learned from and there's a distinction between Noahide or between Chabad connected Noahides and and the more general community of Noahites, of um, which is something I've known about. Um, the, like for example, the Chabad Noahide com community in Texas, the um, the general Noahide community in, in Tennessee, and so forth. Anyways, but that's what. But but the thing that hit me is the way they said that the different faiths within Noahism. And the reason that hit me is because you would never hear Jews using that term. And we can get into we can get into disagreements and ideas of what that means is and what we mean by faiths and the concept of disagreements and what what I don't want to get into the logistics of what makes something a faith, what makes it a a, a a disagreement within systems and so forth. But the fact is, is by use of that term, it states that the person who put up that that um, that website, and it's put up by I think called the, something called the United Noahide Council and so forth. But whoever wrote that 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 website is willing to accept the fact that there are different perspectives and different views even within a, 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 a larger um, a larger category. Um, this is something that Jews are not willing to confront on many different levels. And when I saw it there, you know, I, I found it interesting. If people say Noahism is one faith, but the fact is they're right. Within their their Noahide groupings, there are a lot of theological disagreements, a lot of different perspectives on 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 theological issues. Um, how the Noahides look at, let's say, Christianity or Islam. Uh, whether um, Christianity or Islam is um, an acceptable form of Noahism. Maybe a little bit wrong, but they're basically within the pale or whatever. But the fact is, is, is I'm not really interested in talking tonight about Noahism and the, this, but the, the 
viewpoints and, and, and these, dis these disagreements. What I do want to discuss is the issue of faiths. And not specifically the semantics of the term, but the fact that we as Jews shy away from recognizing theological distinctions and the repercussions of those theological distinctions. Okay? Now, this ex now, there's a certain point in time of how much tolerance and acceptance you can have of theological distinctions and how much how much um, you may have uh, um, sort of issues of the theological distinctions. But the point is, is that what I find is that we can't even confront the theological distinctions. We don't even recognize where we disagree in theology. We don't even, we don't even, we don't even confront it head on. You're talking about like what, like when Muslims talk about acknowledging Jews and Christians. No, uh, well, the fact is, is no, I'm not talking about Muslims. ISIS. Well, the fact is, is that is that in in other religions, there's a theological distinction between Shiite Islam and Sunni Islam, major theological distinction, where the groups consider the other ones to be absolute heretics, like in terms of Islam. The distinction of, of the, 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 there is a major theological battle between Sunnis and Shiites. Okay, um, that existed since the, I think, the generation after Muhammad. They had, a, they had a major disagreement and they considered the other one to be heresy. That's a disagreement within theology, within, within their religion, on, on theology. Um, Do Jews ever think about that? So let's take let's take two different there's two different issues of theology I'm presenting here. One would be in terms of definition of Judaism in its broadest sense, the distinction between Reform, Conservative, and Orthodox Judaism. Okay, how many Jews even think in terms of theological terms? Yes, what's the difference between a, a, a Reformed Jew and a and an Orthodox Jew? But what kind of answer do you hear from Jew from, from a Jew? They keep less. What? They keep less. That's it. Yeah. Behavior. Behavior. Right. We hold it's okay to drive on Shabbos. You hold it's not okay to drive. We have mechitza. You don't have mechitza. Right? That's not the distinction. Distinction is theological. The very belief is fundamentally different. What would be an example like, uh, like Shia Sunni, just to give an example to uh, take into Okay. So, so, so it's in between, between uh, and I'm, I'm just sort of saying this. Uh, I'm not an expert on 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 or or whatever. Religion, okay, uh, I mean I mean um, Shia Sunni, the distinction was on who was supposed to be the leader of Islam after Muhammad. The Shiites went with the direct descendant of Muhammad. The Sunnis went with um, a person who. The Sunnis believe that he was appointed by Muhammad, but I, 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 but he wasn't a direct descendant of Muhammad. So the question was, who was supposed to lead Islam after Muhammad? So there was a major rift of who was supposed to be leader. Now the reason that's significant is within Islam, the idea was there was never supposed to be disagreement after Muhammad. Muhammad was supposed to be the final prophet, and he clarified everything. And then, within one generation, there was a big rift. So that was considered to be a major theological problem, the fact that there was this agreement. Because it started almost like two separate religions. Almost. Right. Well, there's distinctions. I mean, there's similarities and distinctions. But like with Judaism, yeah. like when you have like a, a Rosh Hashiva dies... Uh, let's not deal with Rosh Hashiva. Tell me, the, tell me, start off a conversation, tell me the fundamental theological distinctiveness of Reform Judaism. Rose Garden? What is reform? Yeah, what? Believe in the Mashiach, like the third That's a fundamental just theological starting point of their religion. Yeah, they, they don't believe in that though. That the Torah is divine. Therefore, that's what do they believe? So tell me what they do right. believe. Like rationalism and is that, is that is that is that Zionism? Yeah. That, uh, reform Judaism believes in Zionism. Well, they that women there's women that hold the Torah, there's women that are. That's Zionism. That's Zionism. I don't know what it's called. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is that Reform Judaism was one of the major anti-Zionists until early in the 20th century. 
one of the major anti-Zionist groups in the world was Reform Judaism. Because Reform oh. Judaism, no, they changed a little bit. I guess they're a favor of assimilation. What? No, I think they're in favor of assimilation. <laughs> The point is, is that the reason you guys know, it, 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 it's the fact is, is that you, they're going into a Hebrew school, standard Hebrew school. Yeah, How much theology is taught in Hebrew school? Well, oh, in Shabbos, you all learn, you all learn, you all learn, um, 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 I mean, I suppose because, you know, we all learned about Shabbos, we all learned about, about how we can, you know, say Hebrew. Not that we actually understand the words. So we all know about oh, what? Reform, learn the same thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Reform Judaism. That's exactly, the same Judaism. Same Judaism. That's exactly it. And my oh, problem is, is that Reform Judaism, the average Reform Jew doesn't think in theological terms more than you guys. The fact of the matter is, is that I'm asking you so what, what the distinction the, what is. What would be exa- I'm a little lost. What would be an they, example of like a theological difference? Okay. So, so the so 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 Reform Judaism believes that the that the Torah text, correct? Was not a divine revelation of Sinai, right. but developed out of the out of the out of the um, religious consciousness of the Jewish people. It was it was written from religion, which reflects the ethical moral development of the Jewish people, and therefore the text is is a reflection of. Of 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 the divine inspiration in in the in in the um, development of morality of the Jewish people. Okay, I mean I I mean the point is is that is the text most likely was written with divine inspiration perhaps, and and reflects the development of the human development of um, of ethical sensitivity, right. And and that's why we are constantly in the further development of that ethical sensitivity. Therefore, Reform Judaism takes a very strong stand on women, right? And many, many take a very strong stand. On women. Why? Because that's the ethical development of humanity, okay? And that Jews should be in the forefront of the ethical development of humanity, which supports the concept within Reform Judaism of equality between so the sexes. So they don't believe in the Torah. They don't believe in the Torah as you understand the Torah. They do not believe the Torah is coming from divine revelation. Right. They believe that the Torah was written through human through human inspiration. It be changed. Or not only can be changed. Should be Scientologists. Should well, be no, Scientologists don't have the same <laughs> idea. I mean, is it is is, is that lefties. The, is it is it the point <laughs> is is that is Reform Judaism similar to let's say left-leaning Christianity and so forth because yes in left-leaning Christianity there is also a perception that their texts are, are reflections of, 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 uh, of uh, divine inspiration yeah. of people involved in ethical development what's the distinctiveness of the Jews for some reason they were in the forefront of the but you're right the fact is, is the distinctiveness between the Jews is no different so the fact is is, is that, is that uh, Reform Judaism argued that it was the purest form of natural morality, because because it it it, it had a, a more pure concept of God and so forth. So what makes them a Jew, a Reform Jew, to them? Okay, so now now you're getting into the next question. The next question is what is Jewish identity? So what? So according to Reform Judaism, this is a statement beforehand. In the 1800s, there was a major disagreement of what Jewishness was. I'm not talking Judaism, I'm talking Jewishness. Okay, to us, right, if you ask what religion are you, you would say, I'm Jewish. If a person asks you what nation are you, you might say you're Canadian, you also say I'm Jewish. The fact is, is nationality and religion are both parts of Jewish identity. In the 1800s, there was a major disagreement and split. Secular Zionism argued we're not a religion, we're a nation. So secular Zionism, they looked back on the Tanakh, right, and they considered the Tanakh to be a very, very important work for Jews because it reflected the basic national identity of the Jewish people. That's why the Chidon HaTanakh was so significant in Israel. Chidon HaTanakh was not started by the religious. The Chidon HaTanakh was started by secular Zionists. Because the leading secular Zionists, such as, let's say, David Ben-Gurion, were unbelievable experts in, 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 in the Bible text, in the Tanakh text. 
because the Tanakh was a significant reflection of Jewish identity. And they really looked at the Tanakh because they said the Tanakh is a reflection of true Jewish identity and not the Talmud. So secular Zionists felt that the Talmud, excuse me, for a second, okay, the secular Zionists, they felt that the Talmud was a reflection of the diaspora Jew. But it's all nationalistic. Therefore, when they move back to Israel, it's to return to our homeland. Nothing to do with religion. The, tr the pure secular Zionists didn't want anything to do with religion. We're a nation, we don't want anything to do with religion. Okay? That's the pure secular Zionists. They went, we're a nation, not a religion. Reform Judaism went the exact opposite way. We're a religion and not a nation. Therefore, the fact was if Jewish means that this is our belief system. And therefore, all our national de definitions of being Jewish is no longer significant for a Jew because we should be part of the nation in which we live, like every other religion. So you have Christian Canadians, so you can have Jewish Canadians. Right? And that's, that's where from Judaism. Now, the point is, is that I'm not advocating this position, obviously not, because I'm Orthodox, but the fact is, is, is that most Jews don't even know this. Okay, that's what my point is. The point is, Reform Judaism is a different religion. Okay, within, uh, I'm using terms and language, it's a different religion within the broader definition, broader world statement of what, of a religion called Judaism. These are all terms, invented terms. Okay, it's like, it's like Christianity, Judaism, um, Islam, these are all terms to describe groupings of people and what they believe. And within those groupings there are also disagreements. Reform Judaism is one, and even with Reform Judaism there's disagreements. Okay, the fact is, is that that's one aspect of theological distinctions. Most Jews are not aware of that. Right. The perception of distinction between Jews is, is um, I do this, you do that. And that's why for a lot of for a, a lot of people don't recognize that 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 a lot of let's say people within the reform movement, okay, their argument in terms of let's say women's rights, or let's say in terms of gay rights, they're basically saying these are major theological statements, and it, uh, to, 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 and and are adamant statements in disagreement with orthodoxy. They're making hey, my theology says this is right, and your theology says that it's not. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that one of the greater, one of the major reasons we have same-sex marriages in Canada is because of, if you look back in the history of the development of same-sex marriages in Israel, in, 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 in Canada, okay, one of the major players in creating same-sex marriages in Canada were, what group? Reform Jews. Reform Rabbinate of Ontario. Very, very adamant. Okay? And I heard a reformed rabbi say it. He he used to marry. Um, he would may he would marry a gay couple even before it was legal, even though that was contrary to law because he had he had the right to he he had the license to marry. Because he said, listen, I, 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 he said he said because listen when the law contradicts Torah, right. term Torah because he has a definition of Torah. Right. When law contradicts Torah, my allegiance is to Torah. And it's my perception that Torah says it's, that same-sex marriage is absolutely correct. Isn't there also somewhere in the Torah that says when the law contradicts Torah, go according to the law? No. 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 Depends. No, but no that, that doesn't say that. Believes, well, he's he believes that he <laughs> <laughs> doesn't believe in Israel. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is what he believes in, the truth is that rabbi might, because more, because more, because more, more reform rabbis, more, no, more, more, more reform, more reform rabbis are Zionists today. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's it's very it's very difficult. People go around, rabbi this, rabbi that. The, the, a reform rabbi is a graduate of a certain course of study, which is totally unlike the course of study for an Orthodox rabbi. Okay, the fact is, is they're two different degrees. To call each of them a rabbi is the same way you call two people a doctor. One person is a doctor of medicine, the other person is a doctor of music. Or right? Or yeah, the fact of the matter is, is, is that the same term may not represent the same thing. 
A rabbi, a reform rabbi, is a person who has met a certain course of study that culminates with a reform rabbinate, with, with the title reform rabbi. It is not the course of study that you have for an orthodox rabbinate. Why? Because they're two different religions. Mm -hmm. And the point is, is that reform, reform, and, and therefore, the reform movement is very adamant about its position on certain things. But the, the, uh, my point is not here is to explain Reform Judaism or to give arguments for Reform Judaism. My point is is that people don't even understand that there's theological distinctions. It's not just we have Mechitza, we have Mechitza, or we let women do that. It's the fact that we believe that the position of orthodoxy on this issue is absolutely 100% incorrect because that's my theology. Yeah. Do you believe that uh, if, a, if a reform rabbi converts uh, a non-Jew that they're doing Judaism a favor? The problem that exists when you talk about a reform rabbi converting someone is in the term converting. If uh, if uh, let's use Christianity, okay. If you go to a Roman Catholic priest to convert, what are you converting to? Catholicism. Catholicism. Thank you very much. So therefore, if you're going to a reform rabbi to, for conversion, what are you converting to? Reformation. You should you should you should be converting to to reform Judaism. I had a case once of a guy, a really nice guy, I'll tell you. Ehrlich, in terms of being Ehrlich, is a really nice guy. I was trying to start, we actually started, but we were trying to start a day school in Kingston, New York. Okay, and the way we were going to structure the day school was was going to be a branch of another Torah and Mosara day school. This way, I can ensure that it would follow halachic standards. One guy, we had a, we have an open house for people to come find out about day school. One guy came to it. And he was wondering whether it's possible to send his kids to the day school. Okay? Turned out, as a very committed individual, a really, really very involved in Jewish community and so forth, he was converted by a reform rabbi. Him and his wife were both converted by, by, by a reform rabbi for total theological reasons. Okay? So I said to him, I was talking to him, and I said, you know something, listen, have you co contemplated even going through an orthodox conversion? Okay, and I was thinking even even through more lenient opinions on orthodox conversion because he obviously identifies as a Jew and so forth. So he's already into it and so forth. He said, you know, maybe you should look into you know because he understood it. You know, with a reform conversion, he couldn't send his kids to day school to this day school. And and the and also we were talking. I said, have you considered you know considering orthodox conversion? He got angry at me and insulted. Uh, Correctly. He said, Rabbi, I converted to Reform Judaism. That's the religion I believe in. Don't ask me. Basically, he says, it's like, don't ask me if I should convert to another religion, which I don't believe in. He believes in Reform Judaism. He's a Reform Jew. Now, when you ask the question of conversion, What's the problem? The problem is, is that people don't understand that conver conversion is a religious statement. You don't go up to someone who said, I went to a Catholic priest to convert, and, and, uh, um, and now, now I'm a Methodist. <laughs> Wait a second. You went to a Catholic priest, now you want to be a Methodist? I mean, if you want to be a Methodist, become a Methodist. The fact is, is, is that, that the problem over here is the whole issue of Jewish identity. Because we have Jewish nationalism, so we have people who basically, what does it mean to be Jewish? They 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 they, they even think theologically. Well, the truth is, if you're born to a Jewish mother, you're Jewish, and that's it. And it's not even a theological concept. You could be a, totally lacking any knowledge. You're still Jewish. But if you want to become Jewish, all of a sudden it becomes a theological issue. I mean, halakhically it's a theological issue. You have to accept Torah and Sinai, and that means it is a religious issue. So the major issue with why do you accept reform rabbis? I was a reform rabbi. Listen, 
Form rabbis are not, if, if, conversion is a shift of religion. How can a person who, do, who, who do, who's not a member of this religion, of Orthodox Judaism, convert someone to be Orthodox? And that's really what conversion is about. But it's a religious term. Now, at the same point in time, so why is it someone who's brought up in a conservative synagogue, why doesn't he have to convert? Because that's the nature of Jewishness. Tony Blair, the Prime Minister of, of, of England, was, 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 the previous Prime Minister of England was a, was a member of the Church of England. Then he converted to Roman Catholicism. We understand that. Why? Because within Christianity we understand theological distinctions. Okay? So therefore we should be asking questions. Well, some of his and some of the reforms, shouldn't they have to convert to become Orthodox? No, because they're still Jewish. But the point is, is, is that you understand that there's the same theological issue. Now, that's between Reform and Orthodox. We don't think in theological terms. No. Now, let's take it to Halachic Judaism. Do we understand the Halachic distinctions in theology? There you get into people who basically assume, I'm from, and I assume everyone else who's from shares my theology. And how, may, how much do we understand the theological distinctions of people who are Orthodox? Yeah, they agree on Torah Sinai, but even there there's issues in Torah Sinai. We see a certain amount of theological disagreements in the Slifkin issues, which were all theological issues. But is it, is yeah. it the nature, like we, we spoke about this in previous year, the nature of Judaism, I guess, let's call it Halakhic Judaism, Masoretic, yeah. maybe Masoretic Judaism is yes. a better term. Is the distinct by it, the, the, even though there are distinctions, it's not a theological difference no, because you're in the same religion. No, no, it, it, you can have theological distinctions. Okay, you but can I'm have you can have theological distinctions, but it's still within the system. The system has theological distinctions, but the point but is they often mirror each other. It's not like. There's what? theological distinctions. Yes, exactly. Not, you can marry each other. The truth is, you can marry each other. But the fact is, you're right. The, the, the point is, we don't, we don't define people very mm -hmm. distinctly. But we well, do. We do. We like do. Ashkenazi no, Sephardi Ashkenazi and Halakha are the same. Well, you talk in terms of Chabad. Okay? Chabad has this very specific theological viewpoint. Okay? Other people disagree with that viewpoint. Okay? Okay? Most Pardon? people don't even know about that. Yeah, I mean the Most fact of the matter is, no, well, 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 how many how many people understand that well, Chabad has a certain view of what we call a Yiddish neshama, a Jewish soul. There's other people who say there's no such thing as a Jewish soul, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's a theological distinction. Okay, the point of the matter is, is that is that how many people understand? Now, what are the repercussions of that theological distinction within halachic Judaism? That you're correct about. It doesn't mean that you're not going to marry them. It doesn't mean, but the fact is, is at a certain point in time, it was interesting. It doesn't mean a lot of you're going to marry them, but in many ways, certain Hasidic groups only want to marry within certain Hasidic groups because they don't want to have those type of disagreements. See, what is the what is the scope of a, of a theological difference then? Like how like how wide to how small? Like what would be, like the, the fact is is that I'm not I, I I don't want I'm not dealing with this on a semantic level. Right. In terms of of what the world consists or not. What I, my, my point is, is that the repercussions of those theological distinctions um, vary. Within Halachic Judaism, though the, the, the repercussions of, um, of the theological distinctions um, are they minor. They, they they could be major. They could not be major. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that in certain ways, I mean, this is what happened with the with the whole Slifkin affair. Okay, the, the understanding of how far you can read the the um, the Torah Shmichtav in terms of uh, in, in terms of allegor uh, allegorical perspective. So Rabbi Slifkin had one understanding, and other rabbis said, "No, that's beyond the pale." The fact of the matter is, is that is that is that th that is contrary to theology of Judaism because you're not accepting what is what is the parameters of Torah Sinai. But yeah. Can you just explain the whole Slifkin? Uh, let me try and give you an example. Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. 
which was, it, it wasn't a major issue here, it was a major issue in Eretz Yisrael. It's interesting, because Toronto made, a, made much more of, of, of what he said concerning um, Mice and Bracious. In Eretz Yisrael, it was much more a concept of a Munus Chacham. Rabbi Slifkin wrote a book. Was Rabbi Slifkin? Yes. Just a little bit of background of who he um, is. He's, he's uh, Rabbi Eretz yeah. Yisrael. He, you know, he's, he was a Magid Shir in certain places. He was very much involved in the in the more Haredi community, and now he's very involved in the Dati Lumi community because the Haredi community basically uh, kicked him out. Um, the fact is, he wrote a few oh. books, and uh, people declared his books would be upy courses, okay, um, which were pretty strong terms. One of the books he wrote was called Mysterious Creatures. In it, he presents an issue of what you do when science and statements of Hazal disagree. Okay? Okay, you have certain rabbinic statements one way, and now you have scientific statements another way. What do you do in that situation? So, in Mysterious Creatures, he gives, he's basically dealing with when Ra the Hazal talking about certain animals and certain things and so forth and so forth, he basically, and, and, and some of what Hazal says seems to be contrary to science, so he, he has to deal with it, how do we him deal with it? So he basically presents five different opinions on how to look at the words of the, of, of the Hazal, the rabbis, on scientific matters. The two extreme viewpoints one extreme viewpoint is Chazal is right and science is wrong. That's one, that's one extreme viewpoint. So what the rabbis say, why? Because everything the rabbis say is from Torah. It's Halakha Moshe Misenai, or it's Torah, and so forth and so forth. Torah is unquestionable, and therefore this is part of the Masara. <coughs> and if you don't abide by this, it's wrong because the rabbi said this, and, and whatever science thinks today is wrong, this is the truth. Okay. That's one view. That, that's the most extreme one view. The extreme other view, okay, which is usually associated with the Rambam, Rambam, and Rambam, is that when Chazal presented concepts in science, presented the modern, it was presented whatever, it, it wasn't part of Torah, it was just simply their concepts on science that were generally understood in, 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 those, in, in those days. So their statements on science are not, are not halacha, they're, they're, not, they're not really part of Torah. Now the problem is, is their statements in Torah, uh, on science color various halachas. Halachas actually are developed upon the statements of what they believe the facts are based upon what their understanding was of science. So therefore, it comes to the issue of how, of how to relate to those halachas because they're part of halacha and so forth and so forth. But the fact is, is that it's a position. Rabbi Sifkin was, 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 would, side, would seem to side with the position of Rabbi Rambam and Rambam. And many people are very upset. They know that Rabbi Rambam and Rambam said it, but they basically say that's incorrect now. We, 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 we can't accept opinion, that opinion anymore. What it really comes down to is how do you understand the Munus Chacham? How do you understand the Masorah? There's obviously a question of how far can you challenge statements from rabbis of previous generations, where you argue that they were based upon their scientific knowledge or based upon their perception of psychology and so forth. And that has been an issue. That has been an issue. Um, it's an issue, like for example, in psychology, that it's an it's an issue when Chazal makes certain statements about, let's say, women, the psychology of women, and and people say it's not true nowadays. So that has been an issue uh, nowadays. Like for example, where where um, even within orthodoxy, yeah. I mean, the fact is, is that even there there was a statement made by by Rabbi Rachman um, on a certain issue in terms of women's psychology where he, where, where he says Chazal says this about the psychology of women maybe it's not so applicable today because we see women aren't like that and no one less than Rabbi Yosheber Soloveitchik who was not a big Haredi 
you know, I mean, the truth of the matter is that's not really fair. As far as the real definition of Haredi, he clearly was. But the fact is, Rav Yashem supposedly said that's wrong. Okay, that that statement of Chazal has to be accepted as absolute statement that has to be accepted in terms of Torah and psychology, and we're misreading the psychology like that. But on other cases, from Yashem Bear, you see he also says, listen, there was this perception in the past, and now maybe that's no longer existent. I mean, the truth is, is, is that you start looking at different views of Masara. Yeah. Uh, well, what would the Rambam's position be on this? This identity and this, uh, you know, faith and belief. What would he say? Um, which, 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 I mean, the Rambam was very... What would his perspective be on this? I mean, the truth is, it's an orthodoxy. Uh, and the Rum, the Rumbum's position is, I mean, that's where he 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 is the fir- he is the one who wrote the Ugimli Karim, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, here's the theology of Judaism, okay? And if you're outside this theology, you're no longer an acceptable Orthodox Jew. That's the Rumbum's position. Now, the fact is, is already the Ravid, right? Who's the foremost disagree with the Rambam. It's a famous writer. The Rambam says that God does not have a... You know, talking about theology, this is a good good place to start. The Rambam, the Rambam says God does not have a goof, right? Mm-hmm. right? God does not God, God does not have the physical side, right? And he says anyone who says God has the physical side is outside of... of... Um, of... Uh, Torah Judaism. Very powerful statement, right? Okay. The fact is, is that um, the right that says there were people menu, people greater than us, who believed that God had a physical side. So wouldn't not okay. having a physical side kind of infringe on his omnipotence? So that you have to work out what that means. The fact is, is that so there's a question of why God doesn't have a physical side. So that's part of the Rambam's perspective. That's part of the Rambam. I mean, that's that's the argument of the Rambam. So why these people? Don't forget, omnipotence. When you talk in terms of omnipotence and 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 all issues like that, it gets into a very difficult concept because it's a classic question: Can God create a rock that He can't destroy? Mm-hmm. Well, if he can create a rock that he can't destroy, it means there's a limitation on God. Yeah, can God do evil? Well, yeah, but this isn't this isn't a catch-22. This is, you know, he can have a physical form that he doesn't always use. The, the, so the question really comes down to... The question, okay, so the question comes down to what physical means. Like, for example, there are many people who believe that the rumbum... Like, when you start talking about the oneness of God, let's say the, let's take the issue of oneness of God, and, and even aspects of God not having a physical cycle, the fact of the matter is there are many people who argue that the Rambam would, 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 would define many Balei HaKabbalah within the categories of people who do not have a pure acceptance of the oneness of God and perhaps not the pure acceptance of God not having a physical body. Now, you look at that in terms of the Bali Kabbalah, they would sit there and say, of course we believe God like is one. Spiro? He was attacking the Spiro? Yeah. The There's a lot. No, the Rambam didn't have Spiro. Okay, there are people who argue that the Ra- if the Rambam would have responded to the concept of Spiro, he would sit there and say, I'll, I'll, I'll appeal. Other people say, of course he wouldn't say that. I mean, the fact is, is that, is that the, the, there are theological issues. Your question is what the Rambam The Rambam was very strongly into theology. The Ravid's response where he says, God only many, he didn't believe that God had a physical side. Most people understand the Ravid saying, that's not what I believe, but you can't set a parameter like this. And this goes back to your point, because Torah Judaism has a very broad acceptance of what's willing to accept as tolerant within theology. However, at the same point in time, it does, you know, like, like a lot of people want to say that Judaism doesn't have a theology. It's not true. The fact of the matter is, is the Sadducees were clearly still outside the pale because they didn't believe in Torah <coughs> Moab. That's a theological statement. The is point is, is that, is that most Jew, uh, my my point was, is that most Jews. 
I'm just sort of raising the issue tonight. I'm not, I'm not going into all the issues, but most Jews, even what we term theology, we're not as serious about the disagreements of theology as, let's say, in Christianity and so forth and so forth, because in many ways, we, we, uh, the very essence of our understanding of God is we have no understanding of Him. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, people, you know, I remember speaking to, to a conservative rabbi, but his interest in theology, he says, it's very hard to Jews. Jews never really seem to be interested in theology. The truth of the matter is, is theology is usually the study of who God is, or, or the nature of God. We never really got too into that because... You've got people like the Rambam. Well, no, even, no. even, the, even the Rambam, Rambam, when he says this in philosophical terms, he basically says, he basically says, we really don't know. He just sort of says, he says, you really, you, we sort of know what, what not to say. What yes, not to say. He's, he's condemning anyone who has an opinion he doesn't like. So he's kind of pushing people away from yeah. exploring. Yeah, he was the first of his time, too. That's fine. The greatest people have bad opinions. I mean, the fact is, he is had his view of things. And he had a view that some things out of it were horrible. He was also a doctor and he didn't go yeah, to the Messiah. Yeah, and then one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. But he had... Excuse me, we don't have to, we don't have to, we don't have to... Uh, let's understand something. The Rambam clearly was in a category beyond us. Um, there were other people we were also in category beyond this. The Rashi, Tosus, and so on and so forth. Ramban. I mean, the fact is, is that, is that when you ask questions of who the greatest region was, it was, okay, the answer you sometimes you hear is the greatest region. Okay, the answer, the answer that often you hear is Rabbeinu Tam. Okay, the fact of the matter is, is that, is that, you know. There is a there is but I mean like it's like who's the greatest hitter in baseball? Was it was it was it Babe Ruth or was it Lou Gehrig or was it what's his name? Was, Ty Cobb. No, or Ty Cobb or or what's his name in, in Boston? Um, um, Ted Williams. Ted Williams or Stan Musial. I mean, come on. Right? Who's the greatest hitter in baseball? I mean oh, a ridiculous question. So the truth is is when you ask the question who's the greatest reach on I mean like we have the ability to, 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 to figure it out? I have no idea. But the fact is, is the Rabba was very, very into setting up the theological parameters of Judaism. His answers were extremely, um, for want of a better word, and, uh, and there might have been reasons for it, were very dogmatic. And the fact of the matter is the Rambam did something in history for which he was massively criticized. He gave black and white answers. His Mishnah Torah was, here's the halacha. The reason a lot of people got upset with him was not because of his philosophical things, it's because how come you're saying this is the halacha? You didn't bring down the other shittas. Okay, so you're prosecuting this way. Let's, let's hear the other side. Okay, there's another view. So the truth of the matter is, is the Rambam was someone who came up with very black and white ideas. Now, the truth is, is the reason he did that was because he was a genius, and he and he basically was able to come up. Here's the here's the answer. But the fact is, is that he got into a lot of trouble in subsequent learning because he gave the answers when really the world of Judaism is all the information, all the sources. And the re the reality of investigation and in, in within certain parameters. Nobody wanted to give the answers during this time. That's not true. No, that's not true. The, the that's not true. Not that's out. not true. The people did give answers. And by the way, he was in, he, he was in, he was you know he was in Egypt. He lived in Egypt, and the fact that people were giving answers, and he disagreed with other people. And he got attacked for basically saying, "Listen, you know this person says it." I mean, the Rambam was a, in certain ways, you know, the, 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 you know, there's questions of Rambam, like like Yehuda Halevi, okay? Yehuda, the, the Rambam must have heard of Yehuda Halevi, okay? His father was friends with Yehuda Halevi. The Rambam must have must have heard of Yehuda Halevi. Yet you'll never see the Rambam quote Yehuda Halevi. 
Unilady was, 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 and it's fascinating. Why? Because most likely the Rambam totally disagreed with Yehuda Levi's perception. Yehuda was very straightforward. He wrote a Kuzari. He said, here's what you should do. And you want to talk about being, someone being a real Zionist, Yehuda Levi said, you should go up and make Aliyah to Israel. Well. It's a very adamant statement of, of what he believed Judaism was. Most likely the Rambam disagreed. Okay, the Rambam had a very different perspective. And it wasn't just the nationalistic ideas, the Roman also went there to throw, then he left, whatever. But the fact is, is that, the fact is, is that, is that a lot, but, but in Halacha, one of the major critiques of the Roman is he wrote a safer and didn't bring down the disagreements. So not, now, the Roman's argument is he, he wanted to give a code so people could follow. That's an argument. But was the he fact the leader is, of the generation? he was the leader in, in Egypt. Established like theological framework a lot. Of well, he established the theological framework, which was ve now why he established he, why he established such a such a rigid theological framework had a lot to do with what, what his like situation. The, 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 the famous Gemara of the Tanur, right? What? There's the famous Gemara of the Tanur that that yeah, the, right. The so was he was he the the one rub or was he the, the no? He, he was, was the he was the, he was the rub in 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 in, in, in Egypt. He felt he felt very strongly he didn't have to follow the the own in, in bubble. Gon and bubble said things he disagreed with him. He was a very strong individual. Believed what he believed. I have no problems with that. He was a rabbi in Egypt. He passed into the rabbi. That's a rabbi in Egypt. He had his reasons for writing the yad the way he did. His reasons for writing the theology he did. The only thing I'm trying to say is is that it was his theology. Right. Okay, and the fact of the matter is, is that, is that, is that other people would disagree with it. And say, hey, I'm not sure if I agree with that. So now, most of us yeah. theological viewpoints, so the truth is, is, is that's why, you know, some people say that today we are bound to have to follow the Ikarim of the Rambam, which most likely is the basic definition of our Ikarim. But the Ikarim are not... They're not so black and white that we don't play. We don't do with them. Say even people, even Mukubalim, where my modern scholars would say this is not the real p viewpoint of the Rambam. The Mukubalim say yes, it is. I mean, I mean, I read a book. I, I read a book. The Rambam never talks about a Jewish soul. Okay, never mentions a Jewish soul. He talks about a soul, the human soul. Okay. I saw a person, a, a Chabadnik, basically read a commentary on the Rambam and says when the Rambam refers to a soul in in in, in Sefer Mada in 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 in, 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 uh, in Sadi Torah, he's talking about the Jewish soul. It's not the Rambam. The Rambam didn't believe in a Jewish soul. He believed there was a human soul. Oh, so this person would say, "What are you talking? About? Of course, the Rambam believed in a Jewish soul. That's a, that's that's so significant. Why? Because the Baal Tanya talks about a Jewish soul." And the Balatanya's Jewish soul doesn't sound like the the the, the, the Kuzari's Jewish soul. Okay? The fact of the matter is, is that and, and anyways, what's a soul anyways? Like we we, we really understand what we're talking about, we're talking about a soul? Yeah. The point it's is not yet, no. what? Well, that, that, that's not the Rambam's view. That's from the time then, huh? The yeah. Okay, fine. So it's not the Rambam's view. Okay? The point of the matter is, yes. is that is that the Rambam had a different view. Right. So okay? we're supposed to, so like we So the fact is, it's these are theological distinctions, but most Jews, it's not... It's one thing to, to discuss theological distinctions as Jews, because then you learn to live with Disagreements and machlok is the same way you live with machlok and halacha, because a lot of the theological disagreements, from our perspective, are halachic conclusions. They, they don't have the same repercussions of, of, of disagreements of faith, of say, Christianity and Islam, where if you got it wrong, you're going to hell. Right? The point of the matter is, is we're we're much more. But the fact is, is my point is, is we don't even know how to discuss it. We don't even know how to how to mention theology. And the fact that that, that 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 you have segments of the Jewish community who are following a certain lifestyle because of their theological principles, their understanding of how halacha works, their understanding of, of, of certain content. When I say theological, even the principles of how halacha works, and so forth. And they don't understand that that this person over here, who's from, is applying a different set of principles. 
and that really Judaism incorporates all those Halakhic Judaism incorporates all those principles but the point is, is is that what I find is how is is that when Jews dialogue even even with intolerant Jews they don't know how to recognize that you believe A and I believe B in our system we believe this okay I was taught this you were taught that so, uh, 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 on many different ideas yeah you know you mentioned a really good uh, point you like contrasted the views of basically like uh, Zionist and, uh, and secularism how some Jews believe like uh, you know they believe that uh, Judaism is a nation and they also believe in Judaism but some of them also don't believe that uh, Israel is uh, important. I, what, I, what I said, first of all, you see, Judaism is a term that I use as religion. When I talk about Jewishness, that means that incorporates two different views of, of what it means to be Jewish. There's the secular Zionist viewpoint, which is that we're a nation, and there is the extreme Reform Judaism viewpoint, is that we're a religion. Reform Judaism has shifted a little bit since then. But the point is, is, is that it's a dilemma we all have to raise. What's the relationship between religion and nationhood in terms of Jewishness? That's a whole Jewish identity issue. That's a different. That, that's an issue we all have to deal with. That's very fairly standard. I mean, the practice, like the way the we all believe in the in the kedusha of Eretz Yisrael from a religious standpoint, from a sort of standpoint. The the whole thing of the state of Israel that's one thing. But See, first of all, in talking Jewish identity. One thing we need off the table is don't talk Israel. The secular Zionists didn't talk Israel. Is once we are a nation, we need a country. Right. But but that's but but the country is secondary to their definition of nationhood. So so when you talk Israel, it it brings it into this whole thing. Kedushas Eretz Israel. They didn't have Kedushas Eretz Israel. Mm -hmm. So is it divided we stand and divided we fall? No, no, th that's a different question. <laughs> is, this, is that, is that the modern day Jewish identity? The fact of the matter is, I is think that it is. Jewish identity today, okay, that's a different topic. To that's that's that. a different topic. Right on. Jews, Socialism, okay, you know? the fact of the matter is... So that they could make a government there after the World War II, they would move to... Can, can I can I just what can I just say something? See, the fact is is that okay okay anyone who wants to comment on secular Zionism, I want you to explain to me why David Ben Gurion was an unbelievable expert in Tanakh, and could take anyone in this room, including myself, and most likely any rabbi in the city, in the Chidon of Tanakh. Explain to me his Jewishness. Forget, I, you're saying they just wanted to build a government? Good. So why was David Ben Gurion a remarkable scholar in Tanakh? I'm putting him on the spot. He was orthodox because he was orthodox. No, he wasn't. He was anti orthodox. No, no, no. History. No, no. I think what? He was history. History, history because it reflected of the Jewish history. The Jewish national identity. He understood more than most rabbis do. No, he didn't understand more than most rabbis. He knew a lot about Jewish history. No, he knew a lot about Jewish history, but that's because knowing a lot Not about Jewish history. Wait a sec, wait a sec. Let's Thank understand you, something. Man. Let's uh, understand something. The fact that he knew a lot about <laughs> Jewish history doesn't make him a rabbi. What makes you a rabbi? To become an Orthodox rabbi, <laughs> what do you need? need what? Knowledge. Halachic knowledge, yeah. right? You don't even need to have knowledge of Tanakh. No. So we're not talking about the scholarship of, of an Orthodox rabbi. rabbi right? Okay. Okay. The fact is, is you gotta know your product. the <laughs> point is, wait a second. I don't know rabbi. Okay. So the point is, is, is that there are different. Wait a second. What I'm just getting at is that this is another example beyond theology of Jewish identity. Right. Okay, the truth of the matter is, is that it's my belief that people, that what Jews have always done to try and avoid dealing with the issues of Jewishness is to hide away from it. Therefore, if we don't talk about it and we don't understand our differences, we think we can solve the problems. It's my personal viewpoint that that most likely creates greater problems. The reason we have more problems in Israel today, the reason we have problems in the Jewish community today, is because most Jews do not understand that we do not have the same understanding of Jewishness with, with another person. 
this person's understanding of Jewishness is different than my understanding of Jewishness. And we think that everyone is Jewish same, considers the same way. The truth is that distinction of this comes from, an under, it comes from different possible ways of understanding Jewishness because of the complexity of Jewishness. What I'm getting at, though, is that if we're going to converse, we have to understand who we are conversing with. And knowing and understanding who we are conversing with demands of us to understand different frames of reference. And that's something we don't do. We don't understand. We come across a Jew. We don't understand what our different views of Jewishness are. I'm not just talking about coming across a Jew who's basically an assimilated Jew or a, strong, or, or, or a weak Jew. I'm talking about a Jew who strongly believes in Jewishness but has a very different definition. Have you ever met a rabbi that believes in pro-Palestine? There is actually one here. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I, have excuse me. I know I met one. Okay. A rabbi that believes in pro-Palestine. Okay. Uh, what kind of He's rabbi? What kind of rabbi? rabbi? Actually, he didn't actually get a sneeze He's sorry, that's right. Excuse me. Exactly. Excuse me. He has a beard, he looks like one, he may, you know, excuse people me. walk by, they don't even recognize him. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he looks see, like one of them, you know? See. So he's a rabbi. <laughs> I just want to remind that we're still on the right. And he lives in Toronto and he comes out, so we go, we listen to him. You know? No one listens to him, man. Yeah, I hope so. I, you see. I hope not. <laughs> see, can I, can I, one second. It's true. Listen, 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 listen. See, the very term, rabbi, it's pro-Palestine, or whatever, the fact is, is that, first of all, when you say rabbi, I want to know what rabbi means a certain accomplishment of knowledge. What knowledge did he study? Okay, I've, I know reform rabbis 40 years ago who were very anti-Zionists. Why? Because Reform Judaism in the early in the early 20th century was very anti-Zionist. So Reform rabbis would be anti-Zionist. The Torah Carter rabbis, not Reform rabbis, are clearly also anti-Zionist on a certain level. What they mean, but they're not anti-how. Uh, anti well, how they are rabbis? Because okay. it is. A di nothing, see, that's exactly it. Right. Your definition is very, very narrow. Because you're saying Jewishness is only this. And that's exactly the point. You can say my Jewish. No, no, no. I'm just sorry. I think you're misconfusing. Me. I think you're misunderstanding. No, I, 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 no, no, no. no. <laughs> my point, what I'm saying to you, is a rabbi. Okay. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Before his death, in the, is, 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 let me let me make a statement with you. Okay. I want you to hear about the statement. Before he passed away in the 1970s, most Orthodox rabbis and scholars would have said that the God of Hador, the biggest rabbi in the world, is the Satmar Rav, Reveal Teitelbaum. Yeah. Okay? Now, they disagreed with him. You see, you're, you're saying that's not possible. Yes, no, most people would have said, listen, in terms of, in terms of knowledge of Torah, yeah, you know, talk about most of the God of the door. We disagree with him. Why? Because every other person in the God of category. Now, did I say that? No. I, I, I would never make that kind of statement, but I know people have told me that every that, that uh, you know Tidalbum, who's the Satmarav, was yeah, most likely the God of Lador. Okay. The fact of the matter is uh, now do I say that? No. There was Yosha Bear, there was now would Lubavitcher say that? Absolutely not. Lubavitcher felt that Malcolm Mendel Shearson was the God of Lador from the minute he became a Lubavitcher Rebbe. Me, I don't know. The fact of the matter is is that the person I I don't know. I never. I mean, to me, <coughs> the Gdeli Hador, Rav Shabir, and Ramosha. Those, those, those are the Gdeli Hador. But the fact is, is because someone's the Gadol Hador doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's going to agree with him. Now, I'm not trying to put you on the spot with this, but that's a very powerful statement, okay? Because what you're saying is, wow, he's not even within the pale. From he's your not. If he's pro-Palestine and he dilutes the religion, he's not a part of Okay, now the fact is... A lot that, apple, ah, right. you see? You see, your point... Your point... Your point... You're judging is, people by one slight part of their being. One opinion for the you... The fact that they're a rabbi and they're pro-Palestine. Wait a second, wait a second. The is...
is that Zionism, Not he disagreed with it. Right. Okay? That was his theological viewpoint, based upon halachic arguments. Now, if you are, now, if you're Rav Cook, Rav Cook had a completely opposite viewpoint. He was very pro-Zionist. Okay? The fact of the matter is, is you have these type of disagreements within the Jewish people. Now, how are you able to have these type of disagreements? Through the understanding that these conclusions come from a broad spectrum of, a broad spectrum of information and you work it through. Right. The fact is, what I'm trying to get at is that, is that Jews um, don't recognize the body of information or the underlying spectrum of thought that yields to this agreement of this disagreement of 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 opinions and and that's where you get into issues and the theological things and so forth and so forth the truth of the matter is is that it becomes a a a, a dis listen for for example, let me give you an example of something that that I would find. I have I have my my I have one daughter who 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 learned extensively Gemara and so forth. The position of Satmer is that women should not be not only shouldn't be learning Gemara, they shouldn't really be learning a lot of stuff like even Tarshwal Pan. In fact, in Satmer, they they I read somewhere they don't like teaching women Hebrew. Because so, if they read Hebrew, they start reading Rashi, and there's too much social about pen in Rashi. Okay. Well, what negativity can come out of that? It's not a point of negativity. It's the fact that that they hold that women shouldn't it's be learning. Women sh women shouldn't be learning learning about pen. The point is, yeah. is is that I I um, strongly disagree with that viewpoint. Rosh Bear strongly disagree with that viewpoint. He 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 taught women Gemara. Right. The fact of the matter is, is that those are aspects where you have disagreements. Now, usually those are aspects of halachic disagreements and civil halachic things. This is kosher, not kosher. But there are also theological disagreements or or bigger halachic issues, such as the attitude towards Eretz Yisrael, such as the attitude to, towards towards women learning and so forth. So there there are disagreements. But the fact is, is that we aren't open to understanding the dialogue across these disagreements. Not necessarily agreeing, but just understanding that exists and understanding where it comes Exactly. I'm, uh, I, I am not in agreement. The fact of the matter is, is most likely I would also have a very negative feeling towards a rabbi who is pro-Palestinian. But they could still be a rabbi. But, but the fact of the matter is, now the truth of the matter is, 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 that, is that why would I define him? The question is, is that the first thing is, the first thing is, is that my usual viewpoint is not to say he is a rabbi or not a rabbi, because the fact of the matter is that it limits the definition of rabbi. That's saying there's only one definition of rabbi. I would sit there and say, maybe he doesn't meet my definition of a rabbi, but he uses that term because he has a different definition, and I'm more interested in understanding his definition. So when I run into a reform rabbi, he's a rabbi. He's a rabbi of a religion with which I disagree with. Okay, so referring to him as a rabbi is the same thing as referring to a a priest as a father, referring to a Christian minister as a minister. So that's what his title is. So you know why my position is so strong. Yeah. In addition to this, my stepfather was married by a reform rabbi. Okay. Clearly, I don't believe in reform rabbis, and I don't believe in rabbis. Yeah, know, but, but, rabbis. but the I fact is, can, can, I, can, I, black and white. can I can I reiterate that? What you don't believe in is the theology that that rabbi upholds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The fact is, you don't believe in that rabbi. The fact of the matter is, he is a rabbi. He's a rabbi of Reform Judaism. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, is that let's let's be articulate in 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 the in the statement. It's a rabbi of Reform Judaism. I don't accept the theology of Reform Judaism. Now, so what does Reform Judaism believe in? Okay? Well, and you, well, and, and the Reform Rabbi. What? Was a Reform Rabbi? It's a person who is a scholar. It's an application of the nowhere, you know? Yeah. It, it's, you know. Wait, what, what do you mean? 
What is a reformed rabbi? It's they a certain amount study. of knowledge. It's a cer it's yeah. a person it's who like studies reformed engineer, right? Right. They know right. a certain right. amount. Right. 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 Whatever my okay. personal opinions may be, right. they probably and learn the, everything like a rabbi, a regular rabbi. No. 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 It's, no, complete, no, it's no, like no. a PhD in music and a PhD in psychology. Yeah, they learn how to be cheese burgers. I'm saying they learn Chumash from one side no, to the other. No, no. The fact is, is that when you learn Chumash, you learn it one way. When they learn the Torah text, do they learn it? Yeah, they learn that text, but they understand it from a different perspective. And, and, they, and how much time do you think they learn the Chumash? How much time do you think people yeah, are studying in, the, in, in yeshivas or in Chumash? Probably a three month course. Right? The <laughs> fact of the matter is, right. is, that, is that usually in yeshivas you're learning Shas, you're a reformed rabbi, and you're learning something different. So the, the point like, the is. The Palestinian rabbi would just be considered a rabbi because in the group that he's part of, he's considered. I mean, a rabbi. A pro, a rabbi. The fact of the matter is, is, is that what I'm interested in, what I'm interested in, right. is that. When you say it's pro-Palestinian, yeah. what's a Roman Catholic? Uh, it's just his opinion of speech. Yeah. The, the Roman point. Catholic right. Yeah, and therefore he knows Roman Catholicism. Yeah, right. But when he converts somebody, or like you said before, when he converts somebody, he's converting them to Catholicism. Right. So in terms of for the sake. Not, no, yeah, but my point is though, when you say rabbis are pro pro Palestinian, the fact of the matter is, is that what's going through my mind is what is his theology. Why is he pro Palestinian? He's, he's lost. He's sick. No, that's that, that, that's yeah, not an answer. No, that's not an answer. That that answer. That answer. Like, I don't know what the the the, 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 the altar would. And say. the fact is, the altar rabbi would probably tell him he's sick. No, he's the fact is that you no. Your, your first an, no. Excuse me. Your first answer. Know. Your first answer was correct. The fact of the matter is, is exactly what I'm getting at. Is, is that I can disagree with someone. Let me understand what he's saying, and then I can disagree with him vehemently. Okay? Like I pointed this out for, with people. If you really want to understand um, Adolf Hitler, Yimach Shemo, okay, understand what he argued for. Right. Okay? And then, you have, and so then you understand what the root of his reshus was. Right. Just saying he was sick doesn't help me anywhere. Right. That's so the same thing with... people call him a genius, too. Yeah, some because but some Jews call him a genius. You know something? I, think I, I don't think he was. The fact of the matter with the, what he did. The fact of the matter is. Some people didn't accept that uh, you know World War Two was happening too. No, the fact is, is that's not the issue. People are sheep. The right, issue, that's, right. not the issue. that's not the issue. The issue is is that is that what you're sounding like. I, I, you're sounding like it's like people who sit there and say ISIS isn't a religion. Because they can't handle the it's fact that... It's not a religion. It's an organization. It's a terrorist organization. No, it's like a Zerkata kind of thing. Or, 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 or no, it's a religious... You know, they call it a religion ISIS. No, that's incorrect. It's a religious belief that you disagree with. A religious it's belief ISIS. Yes. What was ISIS five years ago? There were, were other forms. Else. Where were I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean... It's... Years ago. <laughs> it's, it's, it all stems from one place, right? No. 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 You have a. Okay. I that's right. That's right. You can't. You don't want to accept the truth. You can't seem to emotionally disconnect. No. There's a difference. By the way. By the way. Accepting. Too many emotions. Accepting. Accepting. Listen. Knowing. No emotions. The switch is like. Knowing. No emotions. Knowing what others believe does not in any way affect the accepting of truth. Right. Fact is, is that is that knowledge gives you the ability to actually um, debate with them in a in a better way, and actually right. strengthens your own viewpoint. Right. Um, right. You know, the fact is, is that uh, it's just you know. My point was not dealing with the extremes as over. I just wanted to make a point tonight <laughs> that, that <laughs> Jews, Jews don't know how to <laughs> see our differences. Let me put it that way. We don't know how to see our differences. And that leads to a variety of issues and how we converse with each other. Okay?